At this point in 2019, there is now no doubt that retail is falling rapidly, the cause of which is many fold. Regardless, it's an obvious threat to many jobs. Anchor stores are going out of business and the stores surrounding these once profitable locations are now hurt by the ripple effect. So far in 2019, we have surpassed the store closures from the previous year and are on pace for a record year. That's not a good sign. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we're going to talk about the store closures that are going on in the United States. In this video, I'm going to show you how many stores are scheduled to close in 2019, how many stores are opening in 2019, and two separate sources to find the most recent data related to this subject. Let's get into it right away. So I found this article here back on May 28th, Dress Barn, CVS, Pier 1, and Topshop shuttering stores pushing plan closures to 7150. I posted this on the blog portion of my channel, and this had to be something that I was going to make into a video, but a week passed and then new information had popped up. I'm going to give you the most recent data, but just wanted to cover a couple points from this article. In this article, they are talking about the tariffs. They're talking about what's happening between China and the US. People also need to realize what's happening with Mexico and the US. These companies here could be hurt by what's coming. They are saying that they need their corporate profits. They're not willing to shave off a buck or two. And as a result, they have to start thinning out. They gotta tighten their belts. They have to increase productivity. That's their favorite word. And so what do they do? They lay people off. They close the stores that aren't performing as well. And this is what we have today. So like I said, the information got outdated so fast and I'm going to bring you the absolute newest information and show you where to get it. If you want any of these links, you've got to go in the description near the bottom where it says sources used in this video. You click on that and it will open up a document that you can see all of these links for yourself. Directly from CoreSight, they are tracking all of this information weekly so you can see this on your own. So far this year, US retailers have announced 72 15 store closures and 27 84 store openings. This compares to 5,800 closures and 3,200 openings for the full year of 2018. So, so far, just one year difference, not even half a year at this point, you are seeing a major major, major change that these stores are closing down. All of these people keep pointing to the fact that it's e-commerce, it's e-commerce, it's e-commerce. Look, six months ago, nothing has really changed in terms of stores going through e-commerce, people and the customers changing their habits. No, we cannot make that change so rapidly. I'm going to show you the statistics about e-commerce in the United States. I have that information for you, but just understand in a one year period how much has changed these are the stats I'm criticized every time I do a video about this the store closures the store closures what about the store openings I'm giving you the data I don't understand why people can't just watch the video instead of making these comments Regardless, if you see here, they are expecting that the store closures would reach 12,000 by the end of 2019. That's a big deal. So the store openings might be at, let's say, 4,000, maybe 5,000. I'm not sure. But regardless, that gap in there is very, very wide. So again, if you want to get the data on your own anytime, definitely check out CoreSight. The Wall Street Journal had an article about this talking about the mall meltdown continuing. Mall-based retailers reported dismal earnings last week, reminding investors of the sector's fundamental problems. And I do agree with this. Retail is in for a big, big change. I see a couple things happening. There is going to be the high end that will be there. They're going to have to do things differently. They can't use these massive store locations. They have to bring people in in other ways. You can see what CVS is doing just as an example how they're changing, how they're rebranding. They're going to have different services available for people in one facility, kind of like a one-stop shop. 
You see other types of businesses that you can go in and they don't even have any clothing there for you. I know I covered this, maybe it was Nordstrom or some other business where you order everything online, it goes to that location, then you go there, you try it on, they have a tailoring service, they have a cafe, they have other things that they can sell you that you wouldn't be able to get online. And so this brings that together. Now that would not work for let's say a dollar store for instance. No, no, no. It has to be a specific type of retailer and yet they're bringing in businesses that are maybe unrelated but somehow bringing that together in this instance. I think that that could be the only way they'll be successful because the traditional method is simply changing, okay? You don't just open up a shop down the street. Look at how many individuals today, they open up a shop on the corner and it's changing every three months, every six months, there's a new store in that location. And I just feel bad for these people that are constantly going out of business. It's unfortunate for so many and it happens in the malls, it happens at your little corner store. It's all over the place. It's not just in the United States, of course. A lot of these store openings, you have to understand, they are going ahead with the thought that they can somehow compete in today's day and age, but I don't think that's the case. If the big retailers can't make it in this type of business, it is very difficult for the little guy to do so. In here, they give us some of the details, looking at Abercrombie and Finch plummeting 26%. You're looking at Calvin Klein. You're looking at all of these really getting hurt. Their stocks, their profits, supposedly. This is not good for all of these businesses because think about how many people they employ. It doesn't matter about the business themselves. We're talking about multi-billion dollar businesses. Are we necessarily worried that they're not making profits? No, probably not. But understand how many people work for these companies, whether it's in an office setting or whether it is actually at the store locations. Many people don't really care. However, this is something that we need to be concerned about because these people then go to your store, whatever that is, or your services that they purchase, and they will not have enough money to do so if they're unemployed. This is the chart that corresponds to that information, just showing you companies, like I mentioned, Abercrombie and & Finch, and so on. Okay, GPS, you're always talking about this information, but what about e-commerce? It's taken over. That's the reason. If you actually go into the comment section, I have a suspicion that you're going to see about 50 comments that are related to this exact thing. Amazon is doing it. It is e-commerce. It's because people are shopping online. I haven't bought anything in a store in two years. I don't shop at the store. I only shop online. All of these comments are down below. I am able to tell Tell you that even before this video gets posted. Why? Because I've done this similar video giving you updates all throughout. I show this statistic and it is ignored. We have to understand this is directly from the census website. This is a government website. I'm getting the data directly from them. Estimated quarterly US retail e-commerce sales as a percent of the total quarterly retail sales. What does that mean? As a percent of the total retail, this shows you the actual e-commerce sales. So look here, 10%. As of right now, it is 10% of the total. I mean, if we break it down right here, looking at it, 10% of the total, that's it. Now you could make this guess one way, shape or form of how this is actually more, maybe it's more like 15%, maybe it's 20%, maybe it's 25%. I could tell you right now, it's growing. Every year, this is going to grow further and further and further. There's no doubt in my mind about that. However, right now it's 10%, maybe it's higher. This is what the stats they're giving us, and I'm going with that. If you want to look at it deeper, maybe you could say this is included, or that's not included, or whatever. Doesn't matter to me. It just shows us that in total, if we look at the actual total, it's a small percentage of it, but it's growing. Year on year, it's growing. I understand that. What I am proposing to you is that we've got a problem fundamentally with the economy. That's why you're seeing businesses like Costco and like Walmart 
Walmart that are doing better than a lot of the others because people are looking for discounted products. One store that is doing extremely well, in fact, 1,000 of those 2,700 stores that are opening today are dollar stores. Dollar Tree is adding alcohol to 1,000 struggling family dollar stores. This is an interesting thing. And I'm just showing you here how these stores are trying to adapt to changing times. They're going to add some cheap alcohol to their stores. I think this could be something that could benefit them because people will probably buy into this. They're going to buy alcohol from the dollar store. Why not? It's cheaper than the other place. I don't know how this works exactly, but hey, that's what they're doing. I'm just giving you an update. And last but not least, right here showing you dailyjobcuts.com on a day-to-day -day basis. This information is updated on the left-hand side. You get the layoffs, the middle is bankruptcy, and the right-hand side is closing. All of this is linked so you can see each and every one described to you specifically here. If you look around, you can just see some of the examples on the right-hand side. They're just showing you some of the closing U.S. Bank, closing 21 local branches for instance instance. There are others like Microsoft closing its specialty stores in mall kiosks. So many others out there. This doesn't mean that because this company is closing some stores that there's something inherently wrong with the company. No, not at all. This always happens. When these companies get big, they start to expand out. They start to try new things and it doesn't work sometimes. So they close that. If they don't see the profitability, they are not going to go ahead with it. But understand what's really going on here is that it is widespread. I only showed you retail in this video, but also the car manufacturers happen to be another sector completely outside of this that are really suffering today for different reasons as well. I think that the average consumer is tapped out there at the maximum, and we are seeing the effect of that right here late in the cycle. I'm gonna end the video there. If you thought that this was informative, hit that thumbs up button. Don't just go away without hitting that thumbs up button. That's how you tell me that this has been informative and you are helping to signal that this video should be recommended to others. So make sure you hit that and subscribe because I'm bringing out videos twice a day more than most others. So definitely want to stay tuned for this. If you found the video informative, I know you'll find my books, The Money GPS and my new release, Global Economic Collapse, even more informative. You can get all the details related to the economy, tell Telling you about the financial system and so much more, check the link out in the description if you want the audiobook that's available at themoneygps.com. If you want to know what's going on with the economy, you need to watch this video. I break it all down for you. Click on it and I will see you there.